it's helpful. <laughs> page number. Please tell in the page number that we're doing. Where he can find it. Okay, let's uh, look at the uh, our uh, book also. <laughs> I can hear me without the mic also. So Oliver Lutkin, they are looking for, but uh, they're not able to find him. And uh, there is this uh, hack driver that is Bill Magnuson or William Magnuson. He's quite helpful and he is helping him in any possible way. So they've gone around the whole morning. Where, where have they gone to? First they went to Fritz. That is, they know that he likes to go and play poker. When they reach that place, he has just left, it seems. Then they go to the barber, right? And uh, the barber is quite annoyed. He said uh, that he has finished uh, all, you know, like uh, I can't lend him more money because he has borrowed so much. They go to another barber's place to look for him. So one place after the other, who both are looking, we have here, yes. So they both are there busy and looking for Oliver Skins, right? Now the young lawyer, he is having a change of heart. He thinks that I've been so busy, you know, in the city and uh, the people there, what kind of work they give me looking for witnesses and serving notices. That is not my job, right? So he thinks himself to be quite high above this. So when he meets the, the hack driver, he feels, I see this person is so nice and friendly. And if he is like this, what about the other villagers also? They will also be quite nice and friendly. So he thinks it's, uh, he starts having these plans of coming and living in the village, right? Or in the country and uh, starting his firm over here or starting his practice over here. So the whole morning they have been looking around. It's almost lunchtime. What suggestion does Bill make regarding lunch? How can he provide lunch to the ag driver or to the young lawyer? He says that, uh, you know, like, uh, don't buy anything from outside. It's very greasy and oily and unhealthy. So my wife can pack you and uh, so you can pay her for the lunch. As it is, yes, yeah, so he's charging by the hour and uh, the young lawyer does not have any problem in paying him money because he say, thinks that this man really deserves this money because he's so friendly and he's so, you know, like uh, helpful, right? Otherwise, in this place, it would have been very difficult for him to find uh, Oliver Lutkins. Yes, so let's continue here. We are now on page 50. Yes. I know that Bill's helpfulness to the young fellow from the city was not entirely a matter of brotherly love. Once again, he's not doing it out of charity or for humanity, right? I was paying him for his time. In the end, I paid him for six hours, including the lunch hour. At what was then a very high price, but he was no more dishonest than I. So he's being quite dishonest here. He's saying, it's okay. If I have to roam around with him two times, three times around the village, I am not paying. Who's going to pay? My firm is going to pay, right? And even uh, the cab, the hack driver was also quite clever. He's also there charging for the lunch hour also and making him you know, take rounds of the place. But it would have been worth paying him myself to have his presence. So he really liked this man. He's very helpful. He's very kind, very friendly. So I would have paid him out of my own pocket only. This is what the lawyer is thinking. His cheerful country wisdom was very refreshing to a country boy like myself who was sick of the city. So he didn't like being in the city much. He wanted to be in the countryside. As we sat on the hilltop looking over the pastures and creek which slipped among the trees, he talked of New Malian and painted a picture in words of all the people in it. So in one day he felt he knew all the people in the village because yes, uh, Bill was a very talkative person. 
He was talking about his village. He was talking about the people. And yes, the young lawyer was quite attracted that I would love to spend time over here. He noticed everything, but no matter how much he might laugh at people, he also understood and forgave their foolishness. So this we had read, I think so. Yes. He described the minister's wife who sang the loudest in church when she was most in debt, right? She thought that maybe God would hear her. She sang more loudly. He commented on the boys who came back from college in fancy clothes. He told about the lawyer whose wife could never succeed him in getting him to put on both a collar and a tie on the same day. He made them all live. On that day, I came to know New Malian better than I did the city and to love it better. How well do we know our city? The few places that we go to, right? So if somebody asks you about uh, the city you live in and any other, you know, like things that you have to describe. So we know the places that we go to. We know, are familiar with the, like uh, certain areas. So here, he is very surprised that this man knows almost everyone and he has painted everything so beautifully. He's made a very beautiful picture about the people here. Bill did not know about colleges and cities, but he had traveled around a lot of the country and had had a lot of jobs. So please note down, this is a point worth knowing about uh, Bill, that he had traveled a lot. Right, but he did not have much of an education. From his adventures, he had brought back a philosophy of simplicity and laughter. He strengthened me. There are things that books cannot teach you, right? University education cannot give you. Sometimes we learn from experiences. We learn from good times, bad times. So many things life teaches us. Sometimes people we meet, they teach us so many things, right? So here, Bill Magnuson, he did not have a very high, you know, you can say what, was not very highly qualified, but he had learned from life, okay? He, we left that peaceful scene of meadows and woods and resumed our search of Oliver Lutkins. We could not find him. At last, Bill cornered a friend of Lutkins and made him admit what he guessed. Oliver's gone out to his mother's farm three miles north. We drove out there laying plans. So he spoke to a friend and please note the pattern. Did the lawyer talk to any of the villagers? Who was doing the talking? Bill was doing. So he was not, okay? Right, and we'll come to know later on why this was happening, why he was not talking to anyone, okay? We drove out there laying plans. So he spoke to one of the villagers. He's saying he's gone to his mother's house. I know Oliver's mother, she's a terror. So she's a very strict lady. Bill sighed, I took a trunk out there for once and she almost took off my skin off because I didn't treat it like a box of eggs. She's about nine feet tall and four feet thick and quick as a cat, and she sure can talk. I'll bet Oliver heard that somebody's chasing him and he's gone on there to hide behind his mother's skirts. Literally. We'll, we'll try her, but you'd better let me do it, boy. You may be great at literature and law, but you haven't had real training in swearing. So, right, so about his mother, they've heard so many things. She's a tall lady. She's a big lady, right? And quite a scary one. And in fact, she was angry at Bill once. He took a trunk for her and she was angry that why didn't you handle it delicately? Why didn't you handle it carefully? So she says, let me talk to her. Once again, who's going to do the talking? Bill is going to do the talking, right? The young lawyer is not going to talk. What excuse does he make this time? What reason does he give? You don't know much about life. You can't deal with the tough people. I know how to deal with them. You have your lawyer's degree. You've studied in a college in the city, but you don't know how to deal with people from the village. So he's given this excuse now. Right. We drove into a poor form, farmyard. We were faced by an enormous and cheerful old woman. Who's the woman? 
his mother, right? Lutkin's mother. My guide bravely went up to her and said, who's the guide? Bill. Bill, very good. Remember me? I'm Bill Magnuson, the carter and hackman. I want to find your son, Oliver. Right, so who is doing the talking? Bill, Bill is doing the talking. He said, you stay away. She's a very scary lady and a very strict lady. So let me handle her. Okay, so she, he's reminding us, see, we've met before. I don't know anything about Oliver and I don't want to. Oliver is her son, yes. So she shouted, now look here. We've had just about enough nonsense. This young man represents the court in the city and we have a legal right to search all properties for this Oliver Lutkins. See, he's making him sound so important. And this is what city people like, you know, with degrees and uh, their education. They want to feel important, isn't it? So he said, this man has come from the city. He's a lawyer. He has every right to search your property and to find Oliver. Bill made me sound very important and the woman was impressed. She retired into the kitchen and we followed. She seized an iron from the old fashioned stove and marched on us shouting, you search all you want to, if you don't mind getting burnt first. So she got an iron from the fire and said, for you want to, like this is what you'll get first. What? A nice beating, isn't it? She shouted and laughed at a frightened retreat. And when they went away, she was laughing. But I was able to scare them so much for your degrees. Let's get out of here. She'll murder us, he whispered. Outside, he said, did you see her smile? She was laughing at us. I agreed that it was pretty disrespectful treatment. We did, however, search the house. Since it was only one story high, Bill went round it. Who went round the house? Bill. Bill. Why is he being so helpful, okay? Peering in at all the windows, we examined the barn and stable. We were reasonably certain that Lutkins was not there. What is kept in the barn? Stable me fi Cow? Stable there, horses. So barn, yes. So you have in like the cows also the said, right? Yes, so pigs are in a sty. Right, and so they have uh, all the hay and fodder and all that which is there in the barn. Okay, we were reasonably certain that Lutkins was not there. It was nearly time for me to catch the afternoon train, and Bill drove me to the station. His day is over, and it seems as if he does not mind that he was not able to find Oliver. On the way to the city, I worried very little over my failure to find Lutkins. Office me dan padegi. He's not worried about that. I was too busy thinking about Bill Magnus and he is so impressed with this person. Really, I considered returning to New Malian to practice law just because one person is ready to give up a city life and go there. If I had found Bill so deep and richly human, might I not grow to love Fritz and Gustav and a hundred other slow-spoken, simple, wise neighbors? If one person is so good, then the rest of the people are this is what he's thinking, right? So one person representing everybody. So he's thinking all the villagers are so nice if they are like him only. I pictured an honest and happy life beyond the strict limits of universities and law firms. I was excited. I had found a treasure. I had discovered a new way of life. So one person can make such a big difference, right? But if I did not think much about Lutkin's office did, I found him all upset. He's so happy I, I could not find uh, Lutkins, but I met a new friend. But the office is not happy. They did not send him to make friends. They sent him to do work, which he did not do, sadly. Next morning, the case was coming up in the court and they had to have Lutkins. I was a shameful, useless fool. That morning, my promising legal career almost came to an end before it had begun. So, city mein to career, kya ho gaya? Almost over because he got such a scolding from the office. The chief almost murdered me. He hinted that I might do well at digging ditches. You go and dig ditches, you're not good for a lawyer. 
I was ordered back to New Malian, and with me went a man who had worked with Ripkins. I was rather sorry because it would prevent my loafing all over again with Bill. So now they've sent another man with him, and this person knows who is Lutkins. And Lutkins is very clever. He has not been responding to any of the notices, right? When the train arrived at New Malian, Bill was on the station platform near his cart. Strangely enough, that old tigress, Lutkins' mother, was there talking and laughing with Bill, not quarreling at all. So that lady, right? So was Lutkins' mother? She was also there. And yesterday she was angry, and today she's laughing and talking. From the train steps, I pointed Bill out to my companion and said, "There's a fine fellow, a real man. I spent the day with him. I'm so happy about his achievements. He helped you hunt for Oliver Lutkins." Yes, he helped me a lot. He must have. He's Lutkins himself. <laughs> so who was the driver? And he was searching for? Why was he not able to find him? Because he himself was Oliver Lutkins. And he has made a fool of this young city lawyer. So clever he is. Yeah, of course it is. What? Lutkin is not the lawyer. Lutkin is the person the lawyer has gone to find. He has to give him a legal notice that he has to appear as a witness in an important case. But Lutkin is not listening Right? So they gave him as a challenge, like, you go. You're a young lawyer. Let us see if you can do this work. But he was taken for a ride, literally. And now one man has gone with him. I know Lutkins and let us find him. And to his surprise, who was Lutkins standing there in open, plain sight? He was not hiding from anyone. He was there, right? Making a fool of this man. What really hurt me was that when I served the summons, Lutkins and his mother laughed at me as though I were a bright boy of seven. Chota bacha. They're laughing at me. He's a kid, you know. He's not a lawyer. He's just a foolish child. With love, loving kindness, they begged me to go with them to a neighbor's house for a cup of coffee. You've come this far. Please go to the neighbor's house for a cup of coffee. I told them about you and they're anxious to look at you, said Lutkins joyfully. They're about the only folks in the town that missed seeing you yesterday. So please, village So I want you to come with me to go to the house and have a cup of coffee so they can also see who is this fellow looking around for Lutkins with Lutkins. Okay, right? So the hack driver is definitely a very, very clever, very smart. And he's understood that this man is what? Uh, yes, he's young, he's naive, he's... Uh, what uh, right so now we understand the pattern of uh, lutkin's behavior why do you think he was going first talking to the villagers and then telling him no lutkin's is not here what was he doing actually yeah so he was making a plan or maybe he was telling the villagers that this man is there looking for him and they all had uh, you know wherever he was going telling them that uh, say that Lutkins is not here, let's make a fool of this man. So everywhere they went in the village, it was the same pattern, the same reaction he got. And the next day, right, because maybe, you know, he was thinking, wait, or this Lutkins, he did work as a hack driver. So yes, it was uh, the next day also, the young lawyer went, but with another person and then her whole plan was he was charging him money also and he's making a fool of him. He's charging money also. So it was a good day for him. It was not wasted, right? But even then, you know, the young lawyer also did feel maybe the previous day was quite happy that, uh, yes, it's a good day. I have made a new friend. What do you think the lawyer must be feeling at that moment? Achievement or foolish? Yes, ashamed of himself, feeling so foolish. Has he learned a lesson? What lesson has he learned? 
One is okay not to trust everyone easily. What else? The guy who is being overwhelmingly nice is not always like you. What is? It? Yes, yes, right. And don't share your secrets no, or what work you are on with. And once again, if you have been given a task, if you are responsible for something, who should do it? Your, your, you should do it yourself, not depend on others to do that task for you. Now, yesterday we had discussed, you know, like here, one thing. As I said, red herring, there's some things which have been put to distract a person from important information. Who was the red herring here? Hardik, I think so. You've memorized the chart by heart. Every line, every word over there. It's time to read the chapter also. Which book have you opened? Can I see the cover of that book? No? <laughs> it looks a different book to me. I am not the young lawyer, okay? <laughs> Uske andar zara book hai jo wo dikha? Oh. <laughs> okay. So who the red herring? Yes, we can say that it was the obvious things which were they done just to take away the attention. So Oliver was there himself right in front, but he distracted him from looking at the obvious. And even he should have had some presence of mind. So we know that life teaches us more lessons than textbooks. Obviously, life lessons that you learn. Textbooks, definitely, we have information, right? We have knowledge. We know how things are done. But when it comes to survival, you have your instincts to follow. You have to be strong and brave. Once again, let's not trust everybody to easily. Okay. No, it does not mean we should stop going to school. You need uh, your school for an education. You need a degree. Naturally, if you want to do something in life. But one thing is here, when you do get a degree, do not hesitate to do even the basic things. Instant success. Right? You think you've got a degree, I get a job. Oh my God, I should have a big bank balance and a nice flat and whatnot. Nobody is ready to put in efforts. You have to learn from the basics. You have to grow up from the basics, from the grassroots. So little things here. So he's learned a lesson. And now I think so this lawyer is going to be a much smarter. Yes, better in his profession than maybe he would have ever be. So this experience is going to be a life-changing one for him. Come on, let's look at the questions. When the lawyer reached New Malian, did Bill know that he was looking for Lutkins? When do you think Bill came up with his plan for fooling the lawyer? When he told him that he's going to look for Lutkins and he has to serve him a notice, right? He has to appear as a witness. He was avoiding it, you know, and he was there fooling the authorities and is uh, avoiding them for so long, right? So many, uh, you know, like uh, times he had been sent a notice, but he was not responding to it. Sorry. So that is why the lawyer had to go personally to bring him. So he was avoiding it. And uh, that is why. Lutkins openly takes a lawyer all over the village. How is it that no one lets out the secret? So much unity or everybody was enjoying it so they enjoy this prank isn't it right uh, yes so let's all be a part of it that when the hack driver asks the lawyer to keep out of sight behind him when they go into a princess can you find such other subtle ways in which Lutkins manipulates the tour that is one very important thing Lutkins manipulated everything he went before or rather he was handling everything Let's go here, let's go there, let's go to his mother's house, let's, uh, you know, go to the barber shop or the poker place, whatever. So he was there controlling everything. So he had uh, the upper hand. What do you think? Why do you think Lutkin's neighbors were anxious to meet the lawyer? 
yeah so easily and the whole day and he did not have any hint at all right so that is why they were anxious to meet him after his first day's experience with the hack driver the lawyer thinks of returning to new malian to practice law first day he was very happy impressed do you think he would have reconsidered this idea after his second visit he would go after the second visit or never do you think he'll go to such a place where he has been made a fool of will he be able to gain the respect of the people over there they'll understand and see we fool him once we can fool him again do you think the lawyer was gullible who is a gullible person jo jaldi se logon ki baaton mein aata hai person who is convinced easily is a gullible person are you gullible no i'm not You very smart. Are you? Yes, you are all not at all gullible. You are very smart. You are very practical. Oh, so we believe in zodiacs, and we're not gullible, right? <laughs> okay. What about you? How could he have avoided being taken for a ride? If he would have used his mind. If he had. Been 